welcome to the video. Before we begin, if not already, please take a moment to subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. And click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload. Comment your little heart out. And most of all, please enjoy. Now back to the video. There's kind of a theme with sequels. The Blair Witch Project was a massive financial success, really low budget, it grossed over $248 million worldwide, making it one of the most profitable films of all time. This led to merchandise, books, games, so naturally, the studio was interested in a sequel. How do you top this? TELL ME WHERE YOU ARE, JOHN! Do you duplicate it? Do you up the ante? Do you expand on the lore? Apparently not. This is Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Nothing gives Gen X more credibility than Kurt Loder with MTV News. Up yours, Leno. Team Coco. Everyone, even the OG movie reviewers, are talking about the Blair Witch Project. To make a movie about a legendary witch. How many of you actually remember this episode of At The Movies? This movie tells us the Blair Witch Project was a fictional movie. Burkittsville isn't a haunted place. It's a place that a fictional movie was set in. Now, I'm not a fan of sequels turning their predecessor into a movie within a movie making it not real in the established universe. Then again, if the next Star Wars trilogy wants to do this, I wouldn't complain. We get interviews of the locals telling us how the Blair Witch Project ruined their town. Some of the townspeople actually benefited from the movie and turned it into a way of life. Souvenirs, tours, stickmen sex toys. You know you want one. One superfan named Jeff is cashing in on the mania. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here. We flash back to him getting tube fed in a mental hospital. On the bright side, he'll fit into his wedding dress now. Ugh, I hope he ate pineapple first. Then we flash forward, ba back. During the credits, we had glimpses of what looks like a cooler movie. Then suddenly we're in a police interrogation, so we know something bad happened, and we know this guy survives, and we're probably gonna flash back again. Yep, three days. Jeff gives tours to suckers. Stephen and his girlfriend Tristan, who are researching mythology and mass hysteria. Also along is Erica, the Wiccan. And they stop to pick up one more, Kim. This establishing shot should tell you everything. Oh my god, I'm so edgy. Ooh woo. The tour starts, and it's pretty hokey. And I want to thank you all for coming on inaugural tour of the Blair Witch Hunt. They stop at a small general store. People stare at the goth girl. Totally uninteresting scene just to highlight how strangers just aren't welcome in these parts. Another flashback shows people getting beaten. Where's this movie? Of course, they're carrying a ton of camera gears just so they have footage to edit and leave behind later. The movie stops to suck its own franchise dick. You know, if you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. Groan. So how far along are you? What do you mean? Oh, and the goth girl is psychic. The baby, how many weeks? She knows Tristan is pregnant and not happy about it. You don't want to keep it, do you? Pretty intrusive, actually. So what are you going to do? Nope, not touching that one. You remember Rustin Parr, he's the guy who slaughtered seven kids. And yeah, that, that was the house where Mikey was standing in the corner. All that's left of Rustin Parr's house is a bunch of foundations. I guess the basement filled in because everything here is above ground. And this is also where they found the footage from the Blair Witch Project. We still got the symbols and handprints. Handprints! Only those who don't understand witchcraft would be afraid of them. <laughs> Is there such a thing as witch splaining? Where the fuck did this come from? A tree growing through the house kind of ruins the mood for some reason. My question is, how did he miss it when they were walking up? They're making a big deal out of this tree. Erica's here to meet her hero, Ellie Kedward, aka the Blair Witch. Ellie was a good witch. She's gonna be my mentor. So, she's the crazy one. There's one in every group. She kind of acts like she's this actual witch with powers. No, no powers. But you have an actual witch, and you make the goth girl psychic? The tour guide sets up cameras everywhere. Can't be a franchise without hours of boring footage. So far, these characters are anything but engaging. In fact, they're insufferable. That night, they sit around a fire getting stoned. Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Two guys and a girl. Sleep night after night, and no sex. Because they're not animals, Erica. They get really high, and I guess when people get that high, they get more irritating and self-important. Steven, stories like this happen because they exist in a place of truth. By the way, isn't this one pregnant? Well, I guess we know where she stands now. Another rival tour group shows up and harshes their mellow. 
but our heroes tricked them into leaving by telling them they saw something way cooler at Coffin Rock. We saw something up at Coffin Rock today. You remember that rock where those people were found dismembered? Their footage was found a year later, underexposed and useless. <laughs> Dude, too soon. Back to getting high on camera. <laughs> really high. I get the feeling this is less a tour and more of an excuse to get high in the woods. As if you need a reason. We keep getting flashes of murders. I think somebody recorded this movie over a cooler one. Kim is judged by owls. Yeah, owls. Look how judgy. Tristan has the old standard pregnant lady nightmare of drowning their baby. Alcohol poisoning will do that. They wake up and the campsite is wrecked. There's a huge mess and you know they won't clean this up. <sighs> Kids these days. It looks like a really bad head and shoulders ad, doesn't it? Research is shredded, the cameras are busted, and they also all blacked out and have no memory of the previous night. I wonder why. Half this shit is original documents. And why are you carrying around original documents? But the psychic knows the tapes are still here, in the same spot the Blair Witch Project tapes were found in 95. Because we need found footage, the franchise demands it. Tristan suffers a miscarriage and goes to a creepy hospital. How is she? She lost the baby. <laughs> Wait till they run a talk screen. She must still be feeling it because she's hallucinating. One ill-advised medical discharge later, they go to Jeff's house, who has an ultimate set of editing equipment. They'll get to the bottom of this. You know when you keep cutting to the present like this, you learn who survives. Jeff, I think we've had enough videotaping for one weekend. Hey, man. I feel better. <laughs> You're a long way from sane. Stop that, movie! They start going over the footage. This is so intense. We know. We know. When we were camping, I dreamt I heard the baby. Now, was that before or after shotgunning three beers? The big tree is now a small tree. Now there's just this tiny twig. Maybe it was cold that night? The goth girl finally gets some color. Take them. And it's a little late for plan B, isn't it? You're not making a believer out of me, son. We keep flashing back for it. Stop it! I swear to Christ, it was an accident. I swear to Christ, Christ, Christ. They spot some weird stuff on the footage, but nothing to see yet. That there is a naked woman. Steven's a little tense. Look, I'm a little tense, all right? Maybe a massage will help. Whoa, are we seriously doing this? This lady just had a miscarriage and she's like upstairs. <laughs> No, it's just a horrible, horrible hallucination. You wanna come up here? <gasps> She's onto us. There's a naked girl dancing around on one of the tapes, and it turns out to be Erica, who has no memory of doing this. The group of blackout drunks is shocked she can't remember. Also, the guys can't stop staring at the freeze frame. Everyone's got symbols on their skin. Not the first people to go into the woods and bond over shitty tattoos. Rather than deal with the skin issues, Kim makes a beer run and gets into it with the locals. I can have a problem with you two. The clerk is rude to her and they're like arguing about it. She goes through all this and all she's buying is one six pack. The cashier was being rude to Kim, but Kim doesn't kill her. Nope, she does not hurt her at all. Not a hair on her head. And this security camera certainly isn't capturing a horrible murder. I'm not not. I hope the beer is worth dealing with rednecks and ghost kids. Ow! When you buy beer here, it comes with a free bloody nail file. I don't know what they put in the beer here, but pass it over. So do they live here now? Why don't they just go home? Actually, they are planning to go, but Erica's missing. What did I say about the flash forwards? Do I have to take off my belt? Well, I guess she lives too. Remember that other tour group? Well, they're dead. Disemboweled. Thank you. On Coffin Rock. And these guys are suspects. Then an owl flies through the window and it looks like somebody fired it out of a cannon. Three, two, one. They really start turning on each other. I don't know a thing about you. Yeah, that makes all of us, pal. We brought something back with us. I'll tell you what's going on here. Nothing punctuates authority and knowledge like a good long drag on a joint. <coughs> what was I saying? Erica is least trusted of all because she's a witch. It's not racist. It's 
What's the ist word for witches? Dick. Kim, what did I tell you? We break up this awesome scene with another flash forward. Wipe that shit off your face. I forgot to mention that to get into uh, Jeff's place, there's this bridge over a chasm they have to cross to get into the front door. Erica shows up and she tries to lure Steven across that bridge. And then Dr. Soren tries to kill him. Ah! Tristan won't help him up. Help me. Help me. Ah, oh, bitch. Hallucination? I don't know. But Tristan starts having bizarre dreams and we get to listen to her describe these dreams. Because I'm seeing them through her eyes. Third person exposition. Steven, I think I'm going fucking crazy. You already are. Big difference. Kim finds a stack of files on each of them, as of Jeff's been investigating them. This kid doesn't look like he can investigate the lint trap on his dryer. This makes little sense, and of course they argue about it. I have no idea where these came from! And I think he's about to hit him. Damn it! How did you get mixed up in all this? I answered a Craigslist ad. Good news, we found Erica. The bad news is, her performance is finally tolerable. <laughs> Don't even think it. Kim was up here with me. I think they thought the secret to the Blair Witch Project's success was the screaming arguments. I mean, what gets you off the goddamn hook? My word! Which is worth exactly shit to me! Because these guys are constantly screaming and arguing. I think that was part of the audition process. Yell at this guy. Ah! You're hired. Wonder Woman! Wonder Woman! Backwards. Everything backwards. Tristan suggests the key to getting through this is doing things backwards to undo the evil. Why not? Playing the tapes backwards makes even less sense. This must be when we blacked out. But they do play the tapes backwards and they get footage that they couldn't see before because it was recorded backwards? Video equipment doesn't work that way. Now this is the tour we paid for. Oh, and they wrecked their own research. I bet he feels stupid now. There's sex, violence, violent sex, sexy violence. Whew. But it's supposed to be the raw footage and it's already edited. And there's a shot of them hiding the tapes including the one they're watching. Find the flaw in that statement. Comment below. It's beyond the trailer. I guess Tristan is behind all this? Just go with it, the sooner we're out of here. They try to make her confess to being a witch on tape, because they're not going down for this man. Tristan insists she's innocent until she doesn't. You're all gonna fucking die. She wraps a rope around her neck. Whatever you're doing, don't. Rope around her neck. What do you think, genius? But he's a supportive partner and he helps. No! <laughs> It turns out our Scooby gang here are the ones who killed the other tour group. We get a flashback of them killing the other tour group, and I don't know if it's just a flashback for the audience's benefit, or if these characters are supposed to be remembering this. But apparently not, they're still insisting they're innocent when they get arrested. And this is where the interrogation picks up, that we've been watching through the whole movie, and we get the real story from the video evidence that they helpfully recorded themselves. Kim killed the clerk in the nail file. I guess Colonel Mustard is innocent. Jeff killed Erica. I honestly thought this was a blow-up doll for a second. Steven, this is me. What are you talking about? And according to the footage, Tristan was acting rationally and everyone else was being crazy. She's begging for her life and they hanged her. <sighs> Fucking witch. You know, I just didn't appreciate the tone of his voice. That game is wrong! So with all this evidence, they're going down. Bullshit! That was Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. You know, the Book of Shadows itself had an important scene that tied everything together, but it was cut for time and for being really stupid. I read it was going to be voiced by Jared Leto. Upon release, Blair Witch 2 received generally negative reviews from both critics and audiences. It didn't achieve the same impact or success as its predecessor and is often considered a disappointment in comparison. Book of Shadows attempts to critique commercialization and the media's role in perpetuating legends. While this is interesting, it is not explored and gets lost in the mix. The characters all lack depth and are difficult to connect with. Assholes. They come across as stereotypes rather than well-developed characters, which kills the emotional investment. And the pregnancy plotline was pointless. Directed by Joe Berlinger, this film took a different approach by blending traditional filmmaking and elements of found footage and documentary-style storytelling. Because by itself, this movie probably would have been more interesting with the whole mass hysteria theme, how they kind of turn on each other and then start picking each other off. But no, we got angry owls. The film's cinematography is okay, it looks fine, but sticks out when it's contrasted with the original and they don't feel like they're in the same ballgame anymore. 
We want it shaky and grainy, damn it. The pacing is uneven and just doesn't hold the plot together. The movie gets to the action fairly quickly, and then it stutters and spurts with every momentum-killing flash forward. I get that they shot all this interrogation footage and they wanted to use it, but they had to spread it out through the film so we don't have to sit through all of it after the climax. If they needed to pad the runtime, it still came in under 90 minutes. Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 is a generous one and a half Bs. The departure from the original style just didn't resonate. While it has some intriguing ideas and moments, it suffers from a convoluted plot, underdeveloped characters, and a lack of atmosphere from the first movie. And so much of the scary imagery seems to happen just to happen. None of it really makes sense or ties together with anything else. I really hated this movie, and I think I'll be happy if I never have to watch it again. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell. You know, the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!